Jibreel is the first living, breathing creature of Allah. He is the first creature that's ever been given a soul without any parents. How is he brought into existence? You know, when babies are born, they make all these noises and they figure things out. What about the Malaika? What about Jibreel Islam? When he was brought into existence, what did he say, right? Sa'id ibn Musayyib radiallahu anhu narrates, as the angels are brought into existence, they say, There is no power or might except that of God. We have none. So as Jibreel was brought into existence, this first soul, he said, The Prophet وسلم, he says, I've been given permission to tell you about just one of those angels, one of the angels who bears the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, the distance between his earlobe and his shoulder is a journey of 700 years. And the narration of Ibn Khuzaymah, the Prophet وسلم, said, a bird could fly that journey in 700 years. So how do we even determine who's a bigger angel and who's a smaller angel? And what does this have to do with Jibreel alayhi salam? And Imam al-Suyuti rahimahullah says, the greater the task the angel has been given, the greater the size of the angel. So that tells you right away that Jibreel alayhi salam is even bigger than that. He's the biggest of the angels and the greatest in size because he has the greatest of tasks. The people of Lut alayhi salam, that entire city was destroyed by the tip of one of Jibreel's wings. They were lifted up and they were destroyed by the tip of one of his wings. So it shows you the strength of Jibreel alayhi salam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that Jibreel alayhi salam resides directly under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does he look like when he's in his full form? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, رَأَيْتُ جبريل. I saw Jibreel, وَلَهُ سِتُّ مِئَةِ جَنَاحِ And he had 600 wings, not two or three or four, 600 wings. Not only that, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, he filled up the entire horizon and he was sitting on a throne that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided for him. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, not only are those 600 wings spread out, he said, There are constant rubies and pearls falling from his wings. In a narration in Ahmad, the Prophet said, The color of his wings are khadra, are green, and the soles of his feet are green. There's not a single Prophet of Allah that you study, except that there's a mention of Jibreel. Seriously, just go through Qasas al Anbiya, the stories of the Prophets, you'll find a mention of Jibreel alayhi salam in some way, shape, or form. He's got to be there because he has been sent to 124,000 Prophets. In the hadith of in Muslim Imam Ahmad, there were 124,000 Anbiya. Amongst them, 315 were messengers, were Rusul. He has been sent to each and every single one of them to teach them, to raise them, to support them, to protect them. He was there. When Adam السلام, was expelled from paradise, did Allah communicate directly with Adam anymore? No. Now Jibreel becomes the uh, intermediary between Allah and Adam. السلام. When Adam passes away, they didn't know what to do with his body, obviously, because human beings had never experienced death before. Allah sent Jibreel alayhi salam and a group of angels. They washed the body of Adam alayhi salam. They shrouded Adam alayhi salam. They buried Adam alayhi salam. So he's there from the very start, even with Adam alayhi salam. Then comes the very long, one of the longest hadith actually in Sahih al-Bukhari is this hadith where the Prophet ﷺ mentions Hajar running from Safa to Marwa, running around, carrying her baby Ishmael, looking for anyone to help her. She's in an abandoned place. There's no one there, right? And the Prophet ﷺ says, all of a sudden she heard a sound. She said, come forth if you have anything good to offer. So the Prophet ﷺ says, Fa'ida Jibreel. Suddenly it was Jibreel. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, Jibreel did this. He struck the ground with his heel. When Jibreel did that, the water obviously started coming from the earth in, in huge loads. Zamzam comes bursting out of the ground. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Rahim Allah um Ismail, may Allah have mercy on the mother of Ismail. What she did was she carved out the well because she was afraid that the water would go all over the place and nothing would be left. And the Prophet ﷺ said, had she not done that, then the entire earth would have been touched by Zamzam. Now SubhanAllah, think about the miracle of Zamzam. Right? You know how big it is in dimensions? Eight by three. And in an official research that was done on Zamzam, it pumps 8,000 liters per second. That means 691 million liters per day, Zamzam. Think about how many millions of gallons. SubhanAllah, people are constantly drinking from it. It has never dried up. That's just from the strike of Jibreel's foot, okay? You're still drinking from it till now. So that's your connection to Jibreel alayhi salam until today, SubhanAllah. When Ibrahim and Ismail finished building the Kaaba, and Ibrahim said, Arina manasikana. 
Oh Allah, show us the rituals. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah sent Jibreel alayhi salam and Jibreel alayhi salam did the Hajj with Ibrahim. Step by step, he took him through the monastic of Hajj. And one shaitan tempted him from the places where the Jamarat are today. Jibreel is the one who told Ibrahim to throw stones at him. And we do that today in commemoration of that moment that Jibreel told Ibrahim, throw those stones at shaitan. Do you ever associate Yusuf alayhi salam with Jibreel alayhi salam? You don't, I mean, you don't see, you can listen to an entire series on Yusuf alayhi salam and Jibreel never comes into the picture, but he is there. Where is his first encounter with Jibreel? You know where it is? When his brothers threw him into that well and Yusuf alayhi salam went plunging to the bottom, he landed in the hands of a man that he's never seen before, Jibreel alayhi salam. Jibreel caught him to make sure that the fall was not too, too harsh on him. Allah does not lose you. Allah does not let you go to waste. With Isa alayhi salam, Allah Azza just says, Ayyadnahu bi ruhil qudus. We supported him with the Holy Spirit. And Allah even mentions it as a favor to Isa alayhi salam. Ayyatuka, I supported you with ruhil qudus, with the Holy Spirit. The only angel that could take a prophet and ascend and descend through the heavens is who? Jibreel. So when the plot was made to crucify him, the angel that was sent to him to take him through the heavens and to place him there until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees that he returned was Jibreel alayhi salam. When does the Prophet sallallahu alayhi first see Jibreel? As a young child. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was running around playing with all of the children just like everyone else. And this is the year that his mother died. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is a complete orphan at this point. He's lost his mother and he's lost his father sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he's now switching from hand to hand. I mean, from lap to lap. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam still was a very happy child. And he's running around playing with all of the other kids. When suddenly a man came and he grabbed Rasulullah sallallahu and he threw him into the ground. So all of the other children went running to their parents and they said, Inna Muhammadan qad qutil, that Muhammad has been killed. And as they're running to their parents, the Prophet is watching now what this man is about to do to him. Rasulullah said, He cut my chest, he opened my chest. He grabbed the heart of the Prophet and he took something from the heart of the Prophet ﷺ and he said, This is the portion of evil within you, the portion of the devil within you. And he threw it. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, He proceeded to wash my heart in a golden vessel of Zamzam. And his heart was put back ﷺ. And by the time the kids got back, they found the Prophet ﷺ with his chest sewn up. For 34 years, the Prophet ﷺ knew that this happened. And we, we know that other miracles happened with him as well وسلم, with no explanation. 34 years later, at the age of 40 years old, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, the Prophet وسلم, he started to see truthful, righteous dreams. For six months, all of a sudden, the Prophet وسلم, started to see truthful, righteous dreams, good dreams, truthful dreams. He sees in a dream that something is going to happen tomorrow, that someone's going to come visit him. The next day that person comes and visits him wearing exactly what he saw him in the dream doing. He sees a janazah in his dream. He wakes up in the morning and he finds out that a person has passed away and that janazah takes place. And that continued for six months. Everything that he was seeing in his dream would come true the next night. So he already has an idea that something is happening. Just to sort of understand why the Prophet ﷺ would all of a sudden start going to a cave, right? And meditating and praying. Right, something is very strange is happening with him sallallahu alayhi wasallam as he's seeing these things. Then suddenly Aisha radiallahu anha says, Allah bestowed the love of seclusion on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Suddenly he loved to be alone. Rasulullah sallallahu would climb up to Hira. Now Hira is about a two hour climb. Suddenly as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is there one day, he sees Jibreel alayhi salam. Now, did Jibreel come to him in the form of an angel or in the form of a human being? In the form of a human being. So you might be thinking to yourself, why in the world was the Prophet ﷺ scared then? Well, think about it. You're two hours up there, no one's around you. And then all of a sudden you see a strange man standing at the mouth of the cave and he's just staring you down. He's not saying anything. A future narration gives us an idea of what happened to the Prophet ﷺ. Rasulullah ﷺ, when he told Khadija what happens, he said, Ja'ani alladhi atani fil manam. The one who I was seeing in my dreams came to me. So that further establishes that the Prophet ﷺ had already seen Jibreel in his dreams. And so he's thinking that this is strange. I'm not sleeping right now. I'm not dreaming, which explains why Jibreel grabbed him. He hugged him. This is real. Iqra, read. That's the process of that revelation coming to the Messenger ﷺ. Not only that, dear brothers and sisters, but you know when you recite Quran, 
That's the, the easiest way to get angels to surround you is to start reading Quran. You know why? Because the angels have not been given the gift of the recitation of the Quran. And some of you are like, wait, what? The angels do not recite the Quran. يَسْتَمِعُونَ إِلَيْهِ They listen to it. There are only a few angels that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actually given the gift of the recitation of it. Obviously Jibreel alayhi salam and some angels. But for the most part, the angels, they listen to it. So when you start to recite Quran in the Quran al-Fajr, the angels witness that. The angels surround the people as they recite the Quran because they love to hear it since they don't recite it. Subhanallah. He's with the Prophet in every single hardship the Prophet goes through. For example, Abu Jahl says that if this man puts his face in the dirt again in front of us, in front of the Kaaba, he swore by Allah wal Uzza, he swore by the idols that I'm going to step on his neck and I'm going to kill him. I'll do away with him. It'll be the end of Muhammad. Prophet ﷺ, he comes out, he starts to pray in front of the Kaaba. Abu Jahl starts walking towards the Prophet ﷺ. Suddenly he puts his hands on his face, he screams and he runs. And they asked Abu Jahl what happened. He said, the ditch of fire. And he started saying these things like, there is something between me and him. When the Prophet ﷺ finished his salah, the companions came to him, they said, what happened? He said, Law fa'alahu la'akhadahu Jibreel. He said, if he would have tried that, Jibreel would have killed him. <laughs> like I know Jibreel is there and Jibreel would have done away with Abu Jahl. Al-Qadi Ayyad, he writes us a very famous seerah of the Prophet ﷺ called Ash-Shifa, the cure. He describes a narration, an incident that took place between the Prophet ﷺ and Jibreel. Rasulullah ﷺ asked Jibreel, he says, you know, Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you except as a mercy to all of the worlds. He said, did any of my mercy reach you? I mean, you're part of the world, you're part of, you're the realm of the malaika, you're the realm of the angel. Did any of that rahma reach you? Jibreel alayhi salam responded and he said, Ya Muhammad, Wallahi innaka ahabu al-anbiya ilayhi. He said, I swear by Allah, you are the most beloved of the prophets to me. I've never been sent to someone that I loved more than I loved you. He said, and it was through you that I gained security. What does he mean by that? He said, I used to wonder about my fate until Allah revealed to you that he's established in his position with the owner of the throne. Before that was revealed to you, Jibreel used to wonder what would happen to him at the end of this all. When Allah revealed that to the Prophet ﷺ, Jibreel felt the rahmah of the Prophet ﷺ. As the Prophet ﷺ starts to experience the end of his life, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri narrates that the Prophet ﷺ was standing amongst us and Rasulullah ﷺ was speaking and the Prophet ﷺ, he simply said, Allah has given a choice to one of his servants between that which is in this world and that which is with Allah. He said, and that servant chose that which is with Allah. Now the Prophet ﷺ was completely healthy, nothing was wrong with him. So the Sahaba assumed what? That this is just some analogy that he's giving. He's just talking about some servant, maybe in the past or something like that. He was given the choice between that of this world and that of the hereafter. But Abu Sa'id says Abu Bakr broke down into tears. And he said, later on we realized that the Prophet ﷺ was talking about himself. He was the one that was given that choice. And Abu Bakr was the only one who caught it. From that incident onwards, the health of the Prophet ﷺ started to deteriorate rapidly. The fever got to him and Rasulullah started, you know, slowly, slowly, his mobility was reduced. He couldn't come out as frequently, couldn't walk, he couldn't stand when he prayed. It started to affect the Prophet and it started to get to him. Inside of his home, everyone was crying because they knew that the Prophet's time was nearing its end. Aisha radiallahu anha then, she was, you know, moving the Prophet where he needed to be moved. She held the Prophet tight and Rasulullah was leaning against her chest. And Rasulullah his eyes fell to the side on Abdurrahman ibn Abi Bakr radiallahu anhu, her brother, and he had a siwak in his pocket. And Aisha says the Prophet eyes fell on it, and so I knew that he wanted it. So I said to Rasulullah you want that, that toothbrush, the siwak? And the Prophet ﷺ, he nodded his head. So Abdurrahman gave it to her and it still wasn't used. So she chewed it and she softened it and she put it in the mouth of the Prophet ﷺ. Aisha says, as soon as he finished using the siwak, دَخَلَ عَلَيْنَا Jibreel. Jibreel entered upon us. Now, she looked at the Prophet ﷺ and she said the Prophet ﷺ's face lit up. Huge smile on his face, subhanAllah. He was so happy to see Jibreel. And you know what I think about this, 23 years before this incident, how traumatized was the Prophet ﷺ by the side of Jibreel? And he didn't even know who Allah was or what Allah wanted from him. Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khala. In just 23 years, the most beloved sight to the Prophet ﷺ was seeing Jibreel alayhi salam. And Jibreel alayhi salam said to the Prophet ﷺ, I'm here to give you a choice. Either you can choose to remain amongst your companions and live well, or you can have the companionship of the Most High, Al-A'la, Allah. 
Jibreel alayhi salam, when he said that, the Prophet sallallahu responded, Bal al-Rafiq al-A'la, Bal al-Rafiq al-A'la, Allahumma al-Rafiq al-A'la. Oh Allah, the companionship of the Most High. I want the companionship of the Most High. I want the companionship of the Most High. Aisha radiallahu anha, she says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi soul left his body as he was saying, al-Rafiq al-A'la, the Most High, the companionship of the Most High. His hand fell and the Prophet sallallahu died. Now the Prophet ﷺ, he left this world and SubhanAllah, everyone will leave this world. And the Prophet ﷺ said, even Jibreel will die. Can you imagine that? Even Jibreel ﷺ will die. The Prophet ﷺ said that after the horn is blown and the only ones that stand, إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ The ones who your Lord willed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have in front of him, Jibreel, Israfil, Mikal, and the angel of death. الْمُقَسِّمَاتِ أَمْرًا Those who apportion the command of Allah and Allah asks the angel of death, who remains? And the angel of death says, Oh Allah, your noble face, you're here. Abduka, me, Abduka Jibreel, your servant Jibreel, your servant Mikal, and your servant Israfil. Allah says, take the soul of Mikal. And Mikal's soul is taken from him. Then he says, who remains? He said, Ya Allah, you, me, Jibreel, and Israfil. And he says, take the soul of Israfil. And Israfil's soul is taken from him. And he says, who remains? And he says, Wajhuka al-Baqir kareem your noble face, O Allah. Abduka hadha, this servant of yours, wa abduka Jibreel. We're the last two standing. Allah says, take the soul of Jibreel. The Prophet said Jibreel would fall on his face as his wings spread out, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would die in tasbih, subhanAllah. His face hits the ground as he makes tasbih to Allah. Then he says, who remains? And the angel of death says, Ya Allah, it's just you and me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angel of death to die. And the angel of death dies. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullu man alayha fam. Every single person perishes. And only the noble face of your Lord remains. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would ask himself, Liman al mulk to whom belongs the dominion today? Where are the oppressors? Where are the dictators? Where are the oppressors? Where are those that used to kill innocent people and harm people? Where are those that stakbaru, that, that had pride in this world and that thought that they owned things and thought that they were kings and thought that they had unquestioned authority? Where are they today? Aina muluk al Where are they? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Liman al mulk To whom belongs the dominion today? Allah says to himself, Lillahi al wahid al qahar. To Allah, the one, the subduer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's only him. Now on the day of judgment, the Prophet ﷺ says that as we all come back, the Prophet ﷺ says the earth is flattened out of the glory of Allah, obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says each and every single person will not be able to move from the spot that they are standing in the place of assembly. And he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ثُمَّ أُدْعَى أَوَلُ النَّاسِ And I would be called the first of people. I would be the first person to be called to Allah. And he said, so I would enter upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَأَخِرُّ سَاجِدًا And I would fall in prostration. He says, ثُمَّ أَرْفَعُ رَأْسِي And I would raise my head, فَإِذَا جِبْرِيلْ عَنْ يَمِينِ الرَّحْمَانِ And suddenly I'll see Jibreel on the right side of the Most Merciful. فأقو... So, and, and you know what he says in this hadith subhanAllah? He says, وَاللَّهِ مَا رَآهُ قَبْلَهَا I swear by Allah, he never saw him before that day. Jibreel has never seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The vision of Allah cannot be grasped. On the day of judgment, that would be the first time Jibreel would actually be able to look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi ma ra'ahu qablaha. So when the Prophet sees him, he points to him and he says, Ya Rabb, inna hadha akhbarani annaka arsaltahu ilayh. He says, Oh my Lord, this one told me that you sent him to me. Fayaqulu Allah sadaqt. Allah says, you've told the truth. Why does the Prophet ﷺ choose to do that on the Day of Judgment? Why does he feel that inclination? Because on the Day of Judgment, every messenger is being asked whether he delivered the message or not. The Prophet ﷺ vouches for Jibreel before he's even asked. Oh Allah, he said you sent him to me. He did his job. And Allah says, Sadaqt. Can you talk to Jibreel in Jannah? Can you be with him? Can you? You're with the one that you love. Not only that, the Prophet says, Ra'aytu Ja'far. I saw Ja'far radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Wa huwa yatiru fil jannati ma'al malaika. And he was flying in Jannah with the angels. You could get your pair of wings and you could fly with Jibreel alayhi salam in Jannah. And SubhanAllah, one of my favorite things about talking about Jibreel, as opposed to talking about some of the companions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, is that you can actually interact with Jibreel right now. You know how? The Prophet ﷺ, he says in an authentic hadith, and actually Anas anhu says, and Abu Talha says, one time the Prophet ﷺ, all of a sudden his face was just full of joy. So he said to him, Ya Rasulullah, what is it? May Allah keep you happy. He said, Ja'ani Jibreel. Jibreel just came to me. فَقَالْ أَمَا يُرْضِيكَ يَا مُحَمَّدْ أَنْ لَا يُصَلِّي عَلَيْكَ أَحَدْ مِنْ أُمَّتِكْ إِلَّا صَلَّيْتُ عَلَيْهِ عَشْرًا 
aren't you pleased though Muhammad وسلم, that no one says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam except that I send salawat upon them 10 times. Jibreel alayhi salam as well. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusallun ala nabi. Allah and the angels send their salawat on the Prophet sallallahu And when you send the salawat on the Prophet sallallahu Jibreel alayhi salam responds to you as well. Allah responds to you and Jibreel alayhi salam responds to you. So you want Jibreel alayhi salam to say your name right now? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala nabiyyina 